I'm saying that one of the things that I think is going to be an obstacle, and especially these next few months, a um, diversion from our work is this coming election. And uh, Network Social Justice Lobby recently put out a, a notice about Paul Ryan being the vice presidential candidate, saying this gives us a clear choice because. Ryan's budget is so far out of whack with Catholic social teachings that now we have a clear choice. Not to mention that uh, extrajudicial executions are also opposed to Catholic uh, social teachings. Um, uh, detention uh, without trial, without habeas corpus, is against uh, uh, Catholic social teachings. Uh, it's been very heartbreaking for me these last, last uh, few years to, to find good, compassionate people who are making excuses for murderous practices that they would be screaming as though it were their own flesh if this were being done by President McCain. <laughs> or, or, uh, but who are able to swallow it yeah. uh, because it's being done under a democratic uh, uh, administration. <laughs> And then the very answer, we can't depend on the legislature to do it. Uh, uh, we can't depend on, 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 on treaties, on UN resolutions, because if people aren't in the street, those things, are, those things are meaningless. And we have problems right now that we are not going to be able to vote ourselves out of. We are not going to be able to vote ourselves out of the problems, the issues that we're in right now, and, and that we have to see beyond that, and we have to not let ourselves be seducted by the Democratic Party in these, in these next, uh, next months leading up to this election. Hi, I'm, I'm Mary Kern, um, and I want to apologize to the Hancock 38 that I wasn't arrested that day. I was there. Um, I had driven my brother up from my mother's, and I had my mother's car, and I just couldn't do it. But anyway, um, I want to apologize to you for that. But I also would want to use that day, um, something that impacted me from that day. When all of you were, had been arrested and you're all sitting there with your arms bound, um, there was this, a couple of women with their guitars and they were singing, oh, we are asking. And then one of the Hancock 38, uh, a man with dark hair, shouted out, stop the wars, ground the drums. Now, when the women were singing, the police were very, were standing there, you guys were all sitting on the ground, um, and the police were all calm. When that man, and, and the women were asking for peace, when that man started shouting, stop the wars, ground the drums, he was demanding, and the police, then the the, the group of us who weren't arrested stood back and started shouting that. Well, that it was at that point that the police started coming up to us, started pushing us back, started saying, we can get another bus and arrest all of you. So what I want to say is, we got action, we got some kind of reaction from the police. Anyway, when, we, when it was made a demand and not an ask, so all we demand what we want, do not ask for what we think we can get. And that's what I think we have to do. With um, great admiration and due respect to uh, some of the brilliant analysis we've heard today. I have to plead guilty to being in my head too, too long. I, I used to be a physicist and uh, I was trained to be in my head. Uh, I remember the saying that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Uh, those of you who were here on Friday evening got a sampling of my efforts to appeal to the stomach by giving you some real food. Uh, 
um, uh, I think we need to model the kind of world we want to be in and not only I'm not arguing against direct action, but not only direct action, we really need to have a model. And part of that model is the uh, food sovereignty movement, so that people begin to recognize what they have forgotten. They've forgotten what real food tastes like. They've forgotten what the uh, uh, imperial designs of world so-called free trade have done to the farmers in Mexico, the farmers in Africa, uh, who've been driven off their land, whose land has been stolen from them by multinational corporations, because they can no longer sell their own produce at any price against subsidized U.S. grains. Uh, we need to look at those parts yes. of the social... Yes. Uh, you know, I've, I've spent my life protesting. I protested when I was 15 in the, off, in the office of the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky about segregation in the public parks. Uh, uh, all of these protests that I've spent my life on uh, are deeply connected, but it's a hard way of getting into the hearts of the people we're trying to convince to change their value system. And frankly, I think that real food may just be one of the possible ways of doing it. Anyhow, it takes so much time and effort to grow real food that I haven't got time to get arrested. <laughs> see it as a heartless, corrupt, and oppressive part of our society. And um, I'd like the ideal of law, the thing that I think we, as, as a nation, and more and more a world, we have in, it's what we have in common, the law, and it's, and it's ideal in a democratic society, is an equal application of the law democratically derived. And another, that what that really is, is the golden rule in practice. And that is the goal of the law. So for me, it's not a heartless and it's not um, hopeless. It's, it's a part of our deepest spiritual and, and heart and our, and our compassion. Um, and so that's when when I talk about the law, that's what I'm um, moving for, forward, and that's what I see in it. And um, it is what we have in common. It's, it's, it's a way of reaching our neighbors, because I, I guarantee you, and, and this is, it's, it's, if you go to a cop or a judge or even your neighbor and say, do you believe in the impartial rule of law democratically derived? Nine times out of ten, they'll say yes, they do. It is, it's something that we all carry, I think. You know, most of us. There, there are the, what do you call them, the psychopaths <laughs> that uh, wouldn't, wouldn't go there. But most of us do. And, and I think it's a very important um, thing to, uh, to bring into our lives together. And um, I get, just briefly, the... the the UN Charter was, was, I call it, the most important event in human history. I'll have to uh, check in with the Kellogg Briand event uh, act also. But um, it's also the first moment in, in human history. It really created us as a human race, publicly. We publicly declared that we're all equal uh, and all guaranteed to be 
these states from war of aggression. So that's, that's a big moment, and it's a powerful thing to, to bring it up. It's only a generation ago. I mean, some of us were alive, so I, I don't want to be hope. I don't think we should be hopeless about it. Democracy itself is very young. We had imperialism. We've had uh, oligarchy for hundreds of generations, and we're just starting out with democracy. So I, I encourage you not to feel hopeless about where we are. And then um, our trial, this this idea of getting arrested and going to the judge and, and going through the court system, for me, that's not symbolic action. It's very much a real uh, grappling with, a, it's directly grappling with the heart of, of our, uh, of where we need to go to end the war. And, uh, you know, I, um, the, the wisdom that's come here today has been magnificent, but I feel like the real answer, I think we all agree with this, is all of the above in all of these um, strategies and aspects and things. And so, um, for me, I, I am drawn to doing this through the law. And basically, 